You see, sometimes in our lives, we want our will to be done and not His. You see, in man's will, we are filled with revenge. We are filled with anger. We are filled with hatred. But in God's will, we are able to forgive. We are able to have peace. And there is restoration. In man's will, selfish desires, sinful desires prevail. But in God's will, we put others first. And the word of God says that his will is what? Good and perfect and pleasing. Remember the acronym JOY? To truly have joy in your life, you must have who? Jesus first. Others and then yourself. I'm not asking you to become doormats, which means that you just do whatever everyone says. No. You can have righteous anger. You can, have, you, have, you can stand in the word of God and yet still be joyful. That's why Jesus comes first. God comes first. If we follow God, if you're, everything is with you is right with God, then everything else follows. All other relationships follows. Yes, there might be challenges, but God will take care of that. You have to give it to Him. You see, when you experience an encounter with God, you will receive the vision of the cross and salvation. You'll experience genuine conversion. And you will understand the Lordship of Christ in your life. Amen? So who rules you? Is it God or is it yourself? Amen. Fourth one, forgiveness comes through faith. In Christ, you will understand when you are spiritually woke and you are in an experience where you have an encounter with God, you will understand that there is forgiveness through faith in Christ. During an encounter, we look at the Word of God and what it says about forgiveness. And believe it or not, many things in our life that brings us pain and suffering stems from unforgiveness. It's interesting because this week um, last week actually we were praying for somebody and um, as we were praying for him he's, he's in the hospital he's, he wasn't expected to survive and I was praying for, for this person it, it's apparent that he had many a lot of unforgiveness in his life Right, from his father to his siblings to the people around him to everybody's fault, never his fault. And sometimes we're like that. And while he is there in critical care, he, he we shared God's word with him, me and my brother. We prayed for him, and he accepted Christ. Praise God. After all these years, he accepted Christ. And he forgave. That's the hardest thing to do. Because when we forgive somebody, oftentimes we don't want to forgive. Because to us, when you forgive somebody, you're letting go of the right to be angry towards them. You're letting go of the right to receive revenge to what they have done to you. But when, you're, uh, when you are resentful towards somebody and God asks you to forgive them, you don't want to forgive them because you're letting go of control over the situation. But that's exactly what God wants you to do. You see, when we are bitter, resentful towards others, when we are unforgiving towards others, it manifests in our life. We become sick. We become worried. It becomes a poison in our spirit, in our soul. We become resentful. We do things that we shouldn't be doing. You have to remember that all these things, pride, anger, resentment, hatred, these are all the tools of the enemy to keep you away from the will of the Father. And when we give it up to God, it clears the way for God's will to happen in your life, for God's blessings to flow in your life, for God's grace to fill you. Because the word of God says in Mark chapter 11, verse 22 and 25, it says, 
Jesus said to the disciples, have faith in God. Tell you the truth, you can say to this mountain, may you be lifted up and thrown into the water, to the sea, and it will happen. But you must really believe it, it will happen, and have no doubt in your heart. And verse 24 says, I tell you, you can pray for anything, say anything. And if you believe that you've received it, it will be yours. But there is a warning. But when you are praying, first forgive. Say forgive. forgive. Anyone you are holding a grudge against so that your Father in heaven will forgive your sins too. Maybe you're wondering why your prayers haven't been answered. Look deep into your heart. Have you truly forgiven the one who have hurt you? Have you truly given him up to the Lord? Have you truly given him up to God? You see, when you forgive the person who hurt you, you're, hurt, hurt, you're helping yourself more than you're helping the other person. Because, because of your unforgiveness, it's like taking a poison and, and taking it yourself, hoping that the other person will die. But you forgive, and all that poison is taken away from your life. You're also helping the other person by releasing them so that God can do what only God can do in their lives. Notice it. And, and I've seen this. That's why I know, God, I, can, I know God has done this and can do this. Today, if you have somebody in your life that you haven't for, truly forgiven, lift him up or lift her up into the Lord. And watch what God will do. Many of you have shared testimonies that when they did this, suddenly this person that they were angry towards gives them a text, calls them, and says sorry, or, or, re, or opens that line of communication without them um, trying to get it out of another person. Sometimes many years have passed, and they, they have forgotten what the issue was, and here you are, suffering in your own poison, but then when you release that, God restores that relationship. God restores that joy. God restores that goodness and that grace in their lives and in your life. You see in Second Corinthians chapter 2, verse 10, it says, When you forgive this man, I forgive him too. And, what, and when I forgive whatever needs to be forgiven, I do so with Christ's authority for your benefit. So when you forgive others, you're doing it in whose authority? The authority of God. So that Satan, say Satan, will not outsmart us, for we are familiar with these evil schemes. Just like the saying goes, give the enemy an inch and he will rule you. I don't rule her. Right? Give him an inch and he will rule you. You see, remember that the devil must have a foothold before he can get a stronghold. The devil must have a foothold. He must get his foot in the door before he can get a stronghold in your heart. Do not help Satan torture you. Be quick to forgive. And as the saying goes, give the enemy an inch and he will rule you. In Ephesians says, don't, sin, don't let sin. Don't sin by letting anger control you. Don't let the sun go down while you are still angry for anger gives a foothold to whom? The devil. The devil. It's interesting because what this is really saying is forgive as soon as you can. Don't even hold on to that anger. Don't hold on to that regret. Don't hold on to that unforgiveness. Let it go as soon as you can. Why? Because it hinders God's blessings in your life. Last year, we went to when, when I spoke with many of you um, in our uh, was it February Valentine's dinner. We, we just came out of a seminar as well. It's a love and, not love and courtship, but love and respect seminar. And they, they had this thing called the crazy cycle. You see, it says here, without respect, he reacts, and without love, she reacts. The currency for man is respect. When his wife disrespects him, then the husband is hold, withholds love. When the wife withholds love, uh, when the husband withholds love, then the wife withholds respect. 
So you just continue in that cycle on and on and on and on. We call it the crazy cycle because you know exactly what you need to do, but you choose not to. If you choose to respect your husband despite of who he is, you respect him because of who God made him to be, then his love will flow out. If you love your wife not because of what she has done, because of what God has done for her, then your love for her will flow out. Then you get off the crazy cycle and you get on the grace cycle. There's love and grace and respect that goes on in the household. And oftentimes, the challenge now, men and women, the challenge now is, who will be the first one to get off the crazy cycle? They often say that the first one who gets off the crazy cycle is the more mature one. Yeah. So, sino yung mas mature sa atin? Lalaki ba o babae? Honestly, I have to tell you, and I have to give credit to my wife, she often gets off the crazy cycle first. So, I thank my wife for that. Because I'm crazy sometimes. I'm crazy for her. Amen. Okay. Oh, pogi points. Plus 10. Thousand. So, remember... Husbands and wives, all of this can be achieved through faith in Jesus Christ. You will understand that there is forgiveness through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. And finally, this is number five. Just spare me a couple minutes. Who can give me five more minutes? Ask po yung kamay. Okay, one, two... Oh, thank you. So that's, uh, we'll be here until tonight. Five minutes each. All right. And finally, you will understand your privilege in God. When you encounter God, you realize who you are. It says in the Word of God in Galatians 20, chapter 3, verse 26, For you are all children of God through faith in Christ Jesus. If you jump to verse 29, this is what it says. And now that you belong to Christ, you are true children of Abraham. You are his heirs and God's promise to Abraham belongs to who? To you, to each and every one of us. What was God's promise to Abraham? In verse 17, it says, I will certainly, what? Bless you. I will multiply your descendants beyond number, and like the stars in the sky, the sand and the seashore, your descendants will conquer the cities of their enemies. The Greek word translated blessed is, comes from the word makarioi, which means to be fully satisfied. To be fully satisfied regardless of the circumstance. Regardless of the circumstance. So what is blessing then? Scripture shows us that blessing is anything that God gives that makes us fully satisfied in who? In Christ. Is that asking you to be fully satisfied in your spouse? Your, your spouse will never bring you joy. Yes, I just said that. Your spouse will never bring you joy. Only Christ will bring you true joy that you can share with your spouse. Your children will not bring you joy. Minsan sakit sa ulo pa yan. Right? Sinabi kong kaliwa, kanan ka ng kanan. Right? I tell you to go left, you go right. But see, if you see them as the way God sees them, then you are blessed, regardless of the circumstance. The key to unlocking God's blessing is to understand that your privilege comes from being the children of God. See, what's interesting is that God gives us everything that we need to be satisfied in Him. Anything that draws us closer to Jesus, anything that helps us relinquish the temporal and hold on more tightly to the eternal. If you remember last week, we talked about this much of the rope, which is your life here and eternity. Our mind must be set on eternity. This is kingdom thinking. This is truly what God is established in this world. His kingdom in our hearts. 